This is the My Child Will Thrive podcast, and I'm your host, Tara Hunkin, certified functional nutritional therapy practitioner and mother. I am here to share with you the latest research, expert advice, parent perspectives, resources, and tools to help you on your path to optimizing the health and development for your child with ADHD, autism, sensory processing disorder, learning disabilities, or other neurodevelopmental disorders. My own experiences with my daughter, combined with as much training as I can get my hands on, research I can dig into, and conferences I can attend, have helped me to develop systems and tools for parents like you who feel overwhelmed trying to help their children. So sit back as I share another great topic to help you on your journey. A quick disclaimer, please keep in mind that the information provided is for information and educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat your child and is not a substitute for working with a qualified practitioner. This episode of the My Child Will Thrive podcast is brought to you by the Autism, ADHD, and Sensory Processing Disorder Summit. You can sign up for free to watch 10 days of expert interviews and masterclasses at www.mychildwillthrive.com forward slash summit. Now on with the show. I want to welcome everybody back to the My Child Will Thrive podcast. I am so thrilled to have today with me, Dr. Medea Sahid. She is also known as the Holistic Mom MD on social media, as a practicing board certified family physician in the US, a health influencer, an international speaker, and author of the Holistic Prescription, Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation and Disease along with a whole pile of other books, which we're going to talk about in a minute. <laughs> and she also, it, part of that is the Children's Fun- Functional Medicine book series, Adam's Healing Adventures, and to other international books, Empowering the Worlds Towards a Healthier Living. Her current online platforms reach millions of people. Dr. C is the Director of Education at Documenting Hope, an organization we know and love, and also of Know We Well. She sits on multiple medical advisory boards, including Wellness Ma- Mama, And her children speak internationally at the most prestigious holistic conferences, summits, radio, podcasts, including Mind, Body, Green, newspapers, and at the United Nations. They they recently published her paper on religion and the food system, which is really exciting. She is a regular on the international Emmy-winning medical talk show, The Dr. Nandy Show, and she is... Her children host the Holistic Kids Show podcast, which I'm excited to be doing in the the near future, which interviews the biggest names in functional, holistic, and the integrative medicine world. And they help empower kids and educate other kids on a more healthy living lifestyle. So thank you once again for joining us here at the My Child Will Thrive podcast. Thank you so much for having me again. I am so incredibly honored. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love what you're doing. So this is a huge honor for me to be here. Well, we appreciate your time because I know you just recently had another baby (laughs) and you often are juggling a lot of things. And you and I were just talking about this. It's hard to juggle the work and life and a healthy, holistic lifestyle. So we decided that today that's what we're going to talk about is we're going to do just uh, sort of revisit what we talked about last time, which the last time you and I talked was sort of like in the midst of the pandemic, uh, your book Prescription for Kids came out. What's the, the full title of that again? The Holistic Rx for Kids, Parenting Healthy Brains and Bodies in a Changing World. Yeah. So we talked about that and we dove into a number of the different issues that that we're all uh, having to deal with these days. I'm going to just sort of quickly touch base on that and w- where we're all at. But then we just want to talk about, practically speaking, what can we do day to day without getting overwhelmed and without having to dig too far into our bank accounts to support the fundamentals of that healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. And boy, do we need it now more than ever. We are living in a crazy changing world that every day it seems like it's changing and and now with AI coming out and all of these like crazy new inventions, I'm telling you, it's just going to continue to change. So, I mean, if we just look at the statistics, it's really scary. You know, specifically for our children, chronic disease has quadrupled among children since 1960s. And in the next 
you know, couple of years, 80% of kids will have a diagnosed chronic health condition. Obesity is on a rise. Cancer is on a rise. All of these chronic health conditions are on a rise. Um, our children's bodies are sick, but also their brains are getting sicker. I know this is something me and you jive on. It's so scary that, the, you know, there's an increased risk of ADHD, neurodevelopmental, depression, suicide, behavioral problems. And there's so much that we can do in our everyday life to help prevent those and improve those if your child is suffering from it. And a lot of times what happens as a family physician, when my, I was dealing with my own chronic health conditions, I felt hopeless. And I'm like, where am I going to start? What am I going to do? And anytime I would you know, open up a book or listen to a podcast, they would tell me all these really complex things that I was like, how am I going to even afford this in my own budget? Despite me and my husband working, you know, 80 hour work weeks and growing this family and trying to just keep my head above water. That's when I put in a mission that I'm going to try to find those pieces that I can incorporate in my own lifestyle and in my family's lifestyle that are the biggest bang for your buck. And that's why I'm so honored and thankful to talk about this because that's when I started getting hope back. And I was like, oh, this is doable. It's not that complicated. If I can do it, anybody can. And so there's so much hope, so much hope. So we can reverse these statistics and um, and really empower our children and our families. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I love about what you do is because you have brought your children into the education uh, field as well. They are now educating because it is so much easier when it's peer to peer as well. So we'll talk a bit about what they're doing and the books and the, the other series too at the end so that other parents can reach out to those resources because especially as our kids get older and they have the ability to make more independent choices, educating them is key. They're still not going to always make the choices that we would love for them to make because their brains aren't fully matured. Absolutely. But if they have the base knowledge, I always believe that they will come back around to make the right choices in the end because they'll figure it out, right? They, they, they learn how their body feels and how they, their behavior is, or their emotions are their emotions emotional regulation in one state versus another. And, and that's really what we want to teach them in the end. Absolutely. Because when it comes to our children's decision, what they wear, what they choose to eat, the decisions that they make and how they feel is all really dictated by their brain. So uh, we want our children to be make the right decisions and less of the wrong ones, even though some wrong ones will help them, you know, grow <laughs> and understand. But there's two main uh, critical players of the child's brain that's involved in decision making, which is called neuroeconomics. And that is your prefrontal cortex and their amygdalas. So the prefrontal cortex is the developed part of the brain. It's responsible for rational decision making skills. It examines the pros and the cons and helps our children think through their actions after taking a look at the whole picture. While the amygdala is more, the more a reactive part of the brain that is responsible for these primitive, impulsive fight and flight reactions. Um, and then you, in order to make a thought out decision, they need to inform healthy habits. They need to have both of these pieces working together. And, but unfortunately today's life, our children's lifestyles are completely out of balance. And um, they're eating more terrible junk food than ever before. You know, we're having less diet variety lack of sleep, lack of nature, lack of exercise and play, negative social environment, increased exposure to these toxins inside and outside the home is all leading to this imbalanced child. And um, that imbalance also leads to chronic inflammation, which is one of the underlying reasons for chronic disease. So this inflammation is really disconnecting our children's brain connections between the prefrontal cortex and amygdala. And our children are now living these you know, out of control lives. They're unable to use their whole brain to make a logical decision. They're fostering an everybody hates me mentality, more anger, poorer relationships, decreased empathy. And so anything that heightens this inflammatory response that leads to chronic inflammation can then compromise these two pieces. And so what I've done in my own house is I use science, right? So we talked about chronic inflammation, and we talked about how that can affect a children's brain and their body, um, which you probably have had a lot of people talk about. But if you can put a child back into balance, 
with their lifestyle, with easy, cost-effective things that we can incorporate into their everyday lifestyles, just like we're teaching them to brush their teeth, why not we teach them these um, tactics? And that way you have a less inflamed child, a child with more energy, more power, um, you know, they're healthy enough to really create change. And, and you know what, what's really awesome is that when you do that, exactly what you said, you've given them now the foundations that they choose to come out and experiment, but then at least they've had these foundations. They're going to see how they feel. They know how they feel amazing. And then as soon as they start to get off balance, they're immediately, you've taught them those skills that they need to put themselves back into balance. And again, these are easy, fast, cost-effective tips that anybody incorporate. I myself live, I mean, I cook for a family of nine on a daily basis now. Uh, one with my boobs right now, but you know, eight with my hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but still, feeding a family at night on a regular basis is can be really expensive. And and you and you, especially with all the other crazy things that I'm doing, um, you want something that's quick, fast, easy, cost effective. That's going to empower the child and your families you know, mitochondria, optimize their genetics, optimize their microbiome, lower chronic inflammation so they can have the energy and health to do what they want to do. So let's, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about those basics that we can do um, almost every day, if not every day that aren't going to uh, cost a fortune, but are going to support that that overall health and well-being and here i often will talk about it as as your base camp so the things you can always fall back on or that you want to be doing all the time it's like your safe space before you try to climb that mountain again uh, it's where you can reacclimatize and get back on track so if parents who know their children are struggling with their behavior or they're struggling with asthma or eczema or any of the things that we're, we're seeing chronically in our kids today what are those base things that they can be doing that aren't going to break the bank? I think one of the most powerful pieces that I have educated parents over the years and their children is the power of positivity and perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, our children are growing up in this world that we are wake up with negativity. Our social media is filled with negativity. You know, um, they, they go to school, there's negativity, you know, their homes are focused on all the things the kids are doing wrong. And our children are really losing their grasp of sense worth, you know, self-worth and, you know, self-esteem. So if we can, you know, through the science of neuroplasticity, a, help them form and organize these synaptic connections instead with negativity and fear, but then replace that with positivity and gratitude, it is huge. So immediately when you wake up in the morning, say 10 things that you're thankful for. Super simple. And that's the, probably the most cost-effective, most powerful thing that we can do is teach our children the perspective that, you know, either your perspective can be your pain or your perspective can be your power. So immediately when they wake up, say 10 things that they're thankful for, um, during while I, while they're doing their chores, we're singing our thankful song, you know, at the end of the day, we, we go through all the things, you know, that they're thankful for. So then really creating a habit so then we can consciously change that subconscious from instead of thinking negative all the time to thinking positive, because we know that chronic stress and negativity disconnects these two main pieces of decision-making that decreases empathy and impulsiveness and poor decision-making and leads to unhappiness. And then, you know, then, then they're reaching for their phones or these quick instant fixes, like, you know, checking, you know, messages and getting those do dopamine bursts that then lead to this chronic use of short-term you know, fixes, then going back to low self-worth and inflammation and disease. So we got to break that cycle. And I feel like one of the foundations of that is immediately when they wake up in the morning, say 10 things that they're thankful for every day. Yeah, I really like that. It's I think it's a one, it's it's relatively easy and you just have to remember to get in that habit. And I'll I'll uh reference or make a little reference to BJ Fogg and his tiny habits. He creates little recipes. So if you want to learn to do something new on a daily basis, you say, I'm after I do this, I will then say my two things. So when their feet hit the floor when they're getting out of bed, 
that's their trigger to say their 10 things, their gratitude, their 10 gratitude things first thing in the morning. So you can implement that right away with your, with your kids. I just want to touch on the point about the social media in particular and the dopamine hit. So just in terms of what you talked just about, about what you can do to create positive neuroplasticity, what does social media and that, and if you can explain what they get in terms of the dopamine hit of the 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 reward system of social media and the way it is actually designed and how, what that does to to basically negative neuroplasticity which is basically training the brain to do something we don't want it to do absolutely but because unfortunately our digital lives are disconnecting us from what really matters most this then leads to the secure you know lack of secure attachments lack of family time we become addicted to the internet it really promotes this mindless activity that disconnects us from our like higher level brains. And studies have actually shown that this excessive screen time can actually harm a child's health, increasing obesity, mood disturbances, and disrupting their sleep, specifically with that blue light. And, you know, adolescents now are spending more and more time. They've actually done studies where uh, ages from 19 to 32 show that the more social media that they use, the lonelier they felt and more depressed. And especially with the access stress that our children are dealing with today, and if we don't teach them those appropriate tools to manage that stress, for them that they then obviously grab the social media or because checking out the, you know, the likes and how many people viewed your uh, posts and how with the comments and the positive comments, those are all quick dopamine hits. And then you know, because you're stuck stuck in this level, you're, you need that, so you hit, you get the dopamine hit, and then what happens is that it then falls away, and then you got to get it again, and then again, and again. So, yes, for a short time, it may feel oh, like this is amazing, but in the long run, statistics have shown that you know you, it really does disrupt a child's and our health and overall well being. No, it is it is a difficult way. habit to break once they get into it. So the earlier um, people are addressing that, and, and the longer you can wait to give your children access to those things, the better for sure. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's what we definitely want to try to do as late as possible, <laughs> because again, we got to push toward push away those bad habits, and you can get those. Dopamine fixes, again, from like eating bad food um, and our gadgets and other addictions. But if we can teach them these other stress management techniques that can, instead of pulling and then being mindful, right? I think that's another big piece of the puzzle is um, sticking, you know, being mindful to the usage of this. And am I just really picking this up just because I'm sad? Am I lonely? Am I, you know, stressed? Um, and then again, if we can connect that and have a child and ourselves truly be mindful of why we're reaching for these devices and giving them then those other things that we can do to help them with those short term releases, um, that can really help to get rid of some of that and focus on things that are actually more beneficial in the long run to get those better dopamine fixes. Yeah. <laughs> That that's 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 the, that's the goal for sure. So if first thing that, that we're doing and also hopefully last thing at night is is gratitude and and having a positive mindset. What would be the next thing on your list of things that you, that people could be doing with their families? Oh, wow! So immediately when they again, what we like to do is create this routine, and a routine or a ritual can help you create these healthy habits that if you do over the long run, it can create huge benefits. So we talked about gratitude. The other thing is get up and my kids and I try to get early morning sunshine. Super, super important. We know that early morning sunshine really helps to balance our hormones, lowers that chronic inflammation. I mean, we actually have outside, we have a little trampoline they can go out there and jump up and down <laughs> for some of those, the lymphatic flow. Um, and then they get grounding. We go out there without our shoes on. 
It really, again, sets them for the rest of the day to help them ground. Because remember, grounding is super important to lower chronic inflammation um, because that helps to transfer those electrons from the ground into your body, helps, helps you sleep better, lowers the pain, balances the nervous system. Um, and now you're outside, you're spending time in nature. So here, just by going outside, bouncing on, the, <laughs> you've actually, you know, decreased stress. It can help you digitally detox because now you know, and then, it, you know, you're out there, you're not on your devices in the more first thing in the morning and it increases their sense of peace. So um, the other thing we love to do is incorporate, um, you can even do that before or after, even we try to do, even do it outside with the kids is pause and be present and um, incorporating that mindfulness and showing your child, okay, this is what you feel like in this moment. So staying calm and being present can actually help bring your nervous system back into balance and de-stress. So again, do you see just by the act of going outside in the morning, you can now incorporate all of these beneficial tactics, right? Um, that are really beneficial for us. We love to pray, um, you know, incorporate the meditation, the different types of mindfulness. What am I hearing right now? And at that time, it's so much fun because they're hearing different types of birds and they're hearing, you know, like, like the singing of the birds and the leaves, you know, and the wind and the fun stuff that the kids can see, you know, like the little animals that are walking past. It's so much fun to incorporate those really positive experiences and now you're connecting with your child and your family first thing in the morning so that's what we love to do and then if and you know during the summertime go out there if there's garden we also like to garden um you know pick the produce and then use that then in our meals so that's another positive things that we love to do is um you know encourage those and other things that we can easily do to help you know stabilize and improve our heart rate variability you know, is, you know, chanting and laughing and, you know, breathing. So all of these things are really powerful ways to optimize your health and well-being, lower those cortisols and really connect with each other. Um, and then we move inside and then that's when we have to start getting ready for school. That probably takes, what, 20 minutes at the most to do all of those things. And um, even just starting off with just, you know, 10 minutes of meditation, mindfulness, doing, sitting outside, doing that, but you're now you're connecting. And then, We'll make our breakfast, the kids will get ready for their lunches, and then focusing on tons of vegetables, clean protein, healthy fats are, um, are simple things that you can do. Again, focus on the things that they can have, not the stuff they can't have, and really crowd that out. Um, my kids make their own lunches, and that's when they also start doing their, their, their routines, right, of their chores. You know, unload the dishwasher, that will decrease your own stress and then keep the house a little tidy. And that way I have more energy to do the rest, everything the rest of the day. So it's really powerful. Um, and then, you know, you're going throughout your day. The once a week, we love to at least get out into the parks, go for a hike is another thing we love to do. And um, just remember, all of these things are super simple, you know, um, detoxification shower like right before depending on when a child likes to shower we can use that and really pump up our shower uh, regimens uh, my older children will love to just you know they use, they take a scoop of uh, coconut oil and swish it around in their mouths the younger ones can't do that for long but <laughs> another one dry brush dry brushing before they get into the shower um, they love the hot and cold um, I mean, mine are boys, so just getting them to shower is a big deal. But then once they get in <laughs> the hot and cold, they love the hot and cold. And then, they, and then for them, it's like a challenge. How many minutes can I do? It? Mom, I did it this time. I did it for that time. And do the hot and cold again. That's really beneficial for your detoxification systems. And then um, even taking their Epsom salt baths right before they get to go to bed. Um, and then prioritizing that sleep. And um, is really important. Giving your children that to, the, to know that your body deserves that. So my seven-year-old knows that, you know what, I'm starting to feel tired. Even if it's early this time, I need to listen to my body. I'm going to go to sleep. And so he'll do his little routine and then go straight to bed. 
But again, if you notice, these are all things that can be incorporated into what we're already doing mm -hmm. that are cost effective, that are super easy and, um, and really, really beneficial. You know, when you go through all of those things that you're talking about, the, they're, it's not that no one ever talks about them, but, but you realize how simple and how part, all those things are part of your day, but you just don't necessarily structure it in a way that is actually healthy. And some of the things don't happen because you're distracted by technology or, or something else. So it doesn't necessarily get prioritized, but when you look at it like that, and you think about the fact that you've now, like you said, by just going outside and being in nature, all the things that you've addressed, and then by just preparing their own food and doing that in the kitchen, you have the ability to put in whole foods and, and try to balance, balance what's in there as well. And them having some, some input into that while at the same time having a little bit of oversight, Absolutely. which is always the, you know, you, you say we have these macronutrients, you know, which of these match, you know, here are some examples of each of the, each of the things, which one do you want to choose today? That is what's so powerful about all that. And the fact that obviously bathing and sleeping are things that hopefully we do almost every day, sleeping every day, just changing the way we go about doing those things slightly without any additional cost. Absolutely. It can and have such a huge impact. It can have such a huge impact. And um, I mean, again, it's these, you're doing these things anyway. So to give your kids the tools, so just like they're learning to brush their teeth right before they go to bed in the morning time. Now let's add in some oil pulling. Let's go ahead and add in, you know, when you take a shower, these are the, the steps that just change up the steps and just those small things and making it, you know, incorporate a game. For my boys, they're all, it's all a game, right? We're going to go outside. They love to, even if it's cold outside, I'm in Chicago. We try to get it done during the uh, winter times. For them, it's a game. Uh, they run out there and they're like, let's check this out. Like, can I do it? Uh, how long can I stay out here? <laughs> you know, for to, to really build some of that hormesis, you know, um, which is a little bit of stress with, that gives you uh, great results in the long run. But again, these are simple things that we can do to incorporate into their everyday daily routine that are really powerful. And again, those looking at those macronutrients and, you know, in their lunches, I think um, what we started to do that is so cost effective and really easy and fun and the kids re really love to get into it is growing your own mi uh, microgreens and your broccoli sprouts. It's so much fun. It's like a chemical experiment on your, like you can't kill broccoli sprouts. I can kill a lot of other things. And, you know, sometimes gardening, especially when you're busy, it's really difficult to garden. But the, one of the most cost effective things that, and the funnest things for the kids to see every day is growing your own microgreens and um, broccoli sprouts. So it's really, you just take a tablespoon or two tablespoons in um, like a mason jar right, with uh, a cat with a screen cap on it and um, in three fourths cup of water. I just let it soak, dump it out the next day, um, turn it in a 45 degree angle away from the sun. You just wash the wa wash it, uh, rinse it out twice a day, tw two times, twice a day, put it back on there. Within a week, five days, you have the entire thing that is packed with sprouts. And that's, again, something that kids can easily, I throw the sprouts into everything. Um, and normally, if you get that, you know, outside at Whole Foods or different farmers markets, they can be really cost, they're really costly. But if you grow them at home, so much more cheaper, packed with phytonutrients, because we know that just a little bit has like a hundred times more sulforaphane than the regular broccoli. Yeah. So again, that can be snuck in. Like if your kids are even eating sandwiches, you can stick that in there. You can put that in. I Whenever I make chili, I'll stick that in there. Whenever I'm doing ground beef or any type of protein, I'll throw it in there. I'll throw it in the burritos with their cassava flour wraps. I'll throw it on tacos. So we are, now you're sneaking in all this beneficial phytonutrients and sulforaphane into their what they're whatever they're already eating again another cost away effective ways to include include those macronutrients into whatever they're already doing so it's so yeah. much fun so much fun. yeah i well i always love those things that that you can sneak in there that 
eliminate the need for any supplementation because the reality is supplementation is super expensive and it's also super difficult with most kids uh, because they just don't either aren't able to swallow the supplements or they don't tolerate the taste or texture or whatever it might be. So uh, broccoli seed sprouts are so good for that because they they are so nutrient dense and have a lot of things that for those that aren't in the know about that are going to support methylation, which is a, a challenge for a number of the kids. That, of the parents that are listening today. So, well, we have gone over a lot again, as usual. I want to, before we wrap up, I want to talk about more about your books because you really are a prolific author. It's really inspiring. There are, you have so many amazing resources out there and I don't want, we will link to all of them in the show notes, but I want you just to walk us through the series of books that you have and who they're for so that those that are listening can go and collect the ones that they can, they can best use or gift them to uh, friends and family that they know can use them as well. Absolutely. You know, when I was having baby after baby after baby, and I still wanted to benefit the world. And as I was learning about it, I started incorporating it into my daily routines. So um, I was just collecting all the science and, and I'm like, why don't I just write, put these in books? Because uh, I went part-time in my clinic. So then I thought, so I can raise my family. And uh, um, I have a sugar daddy for, you know, the main income. <laughs> So that's, it was so nice to like, as I was learning about it, as I was healing my own chronic conditions, because I've had lupus, Hashimoto, severe digestive issues, acne, eczema, support dermatitis, all of these chronic health conditions. And as I was navigating that as a family physician, I saw how difficult it was to really, you know, know where to start. And that's when I, the first book that I wrote was called The Holistic Rx. Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation and Disease. That's the best of functional, integrative, holistic medicine that covers over 80 conditions for all ages. Amazing. So, awesome. And uh, homeopathic supplements, uh, acupressure points, aromatherapy for 80 some conditions for all ages. And that was a by book on, okay, for me, that was because I, I needed a, something to guide my patients. And so as I was doing that, I started compiling it in a book. And that came, that was my first book. And then I wrote The Holistic Rx for Kids, Parenting Healthy Brains and Bodies in a Changing World. Then I started The Pandemic Hit, um, and I started writing these books with my children. And it's the Adam's Healing Adventure children's book series. So the first one is The Power of Health, From Sickness to Health. The, then the second one is The Power of Rainbow Foods. And then the third one that just recently came out is The, the Gratitude is a Superpower. Mm-hmm. And these are things that your uh, your family can then incorporate into their everyday daily routine. I mean, this here is the latest one. Um, they're really cute. They're easy. They're packed with color and um, simple things. Again, they they can incorporate. Oh, I disappeared. Uh, mm-hmm. Incorporate into their daily routines. Um, that will be empowering. Again, simple things that they can do every day. And uh, they started doing that with the kids. So I have three of those books out. And then um, I realized that there was no books for the Muslim audience. So that's when uh, during that, I wrote one about the pandemic. And then um, the one that came out a couple months ago was also called The Quranic Prescription Unlocking the Secrets to Optimal Health, which is really everything that we talk about, functional medicine, how to take care of the body and eat, re- eating real foods that God made, giving it sleep, decreasing the stress through prayer, meditation, mindfulness, like all of that stuff, but put it in the perspective for Muslims specifically. And that is being translated into four different languages currently. And then, um, yeah, and then just working on some kids, uh, some cooking books right now. So it's just a lot. So that's like the seven books that I have written. Um, and then... Yeah, it's so much fun. And then I started a podcast with the kids because I was like, what am I going to do with them during the pandemic (laughs) (laughs) to continue to build instead? Because a lot of people, a lot of kids regressed during the pandemic. I'm like, let me use this time now. They're with me at home. What can I do to help empower them with, you know, these life skills that I was learning myself? So the kids started the, uh, the Holistic Kid Show podcast. Currently, they have uh, 90 episodes and that they've done. Uh, my oldest currently is 15, then 
where they started it when the youngest was six years old. So now he's, you know, he just turned 10. So they've been doing it a little bit over the, over three years. So it's, it's really awesome how much now knowledge and ex, you know, experience they have. So again, that's something that I really wanted to throw out into the world to get our kids involved in this conversation, because I feel like there's a lot of adults talking to adults and adults talking to children, but there's not a lot of children talking with adults to children or, you know, uh, children talking to children for children. And so that's what I really want to throw out there. So lots of amazing resources. I actually even started a social media page with my mother-in-law because in this house we have three generations. And my mother-in-law, we have a holistic Urdu MD channel. That, that's where we get the millions of views and to really get to people all over the world. So yes, there's three generations in this household educating the world about health and wellness. And um, I just had my fifth boy, so he will be joining the crew. So the, hoping, hoping that the Holistic Kid Show podcast and all these children's books will continue for years to come because now I have other kids. I will have kids for another 15, 20, you know, 15 years at minimum. <laughs> It's just, you know, you just keep on having, uh, you know, they just business keep on joining so the, like the family business. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a family. Yeah, having children to, you know, take over the podcast. podcast. And have nice books. <laughs> well, the other ones go to college and then they'll be well, done the college. Really to, when... And I still have now a 15-year-old. So as soon as my seven-year-old turns 15, this one will be able to, like, join in. So I got That's a little perfect. plan <laughs> It's perfect. You really well thought Lots thought out for sure. Lots of resources. There well, well, given given everything you have going on, I so appreciate <laughs> you joining me again today. And like I said before, we will link to all of the books in the show notes. I highly recommend them. They are fabulous resources, research backed. Like these these are not just ideas. These are it's science that we can incorporate, but it's very approachable the way that you do it through your books. And obviously your conversations with us as well. So I really appreciate your time and uh, I can't wait to do it sometime again in the future. Thank you so much for having me. I am so incredibly honored, literally just talking to someone who's like-minded and talking to others that are like-minded, puts fire in my soul to continue this. So even despite being a little sleep deprived with the newborn, you know, sleep wakes a cycle. Um, I am so thankful to have to be here with you today because it adds fire to my soul. So thank you for all the amazing work you're doing and supporting all of us. Mwah! I am so thankful. Yeah, so the feeling is mutual. <laughs> Bye for now. Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please support us by subscribing and giving us a review on your podcast platform of choice. This is Tara Hunkin, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the podcast or over at mychildwillthrive.com where you can find articles and the free My Child Will Thrive Toolkit too.